thank you all for being here. Today I will be discussing the history of cosmetics. Being a licensed esthetician, mud makeup artist, and previously interning for celebrity makeup artist Mary Beth York myself, this topic is not only interesting, but intriguing and filled with amazing facts about cosmetics and techniques that many of us still use today. As I will be discussing where cosmetics all began, where it went, to where it is now, let me make sure we are all on the same page. If you could pick one word to describe the meaning of cosmetics, what is the first word that comes to mind? To me, this word would be beauty. Beauty is the quality of being pleasing, especially to look at, or someone or something that gives great pleasure, especially when looking at it. This is a great word to think about as we go through where, who, and why cosmetics all began. With the word beauty in mind and the meaning it has behind the use of cosmetics to you, let's further discuss where and why cosmetics came from. Cosmetics can be dated all the way back to 4000 BC in ancient Egypt. Doing my research, I found an article from historyofcosmetics.net stating that the Egyptians first found that scented oils made good use for its healing properties. Cosmetics would soon rise into an important part of their religion as well. Slow down. The Egyptians also used eyeliner above their eye to protect their eye from the sun, and it had a winged out effect as we see here. This technique is still used today, defined as the cat eye, as we see in the cover girl intensifying the eyeliner here, as well as this model and this model, and of course our Egyptian model here. They also use beeswax, olive oil, and rose water to make a protective balm against the sun and dry winds. Even though some of their cosmetics had ingredients that were poisonous, it didn't stop many Egyptians from the use of cosmetics. Many Egyptians had also used charcoal from a previous lip match to enhance the crease in the eye, as well as crushed berries to enhance the color of the lips, as you see in the crease technique here. The crease technique is still widely sought after today such as my internship with Mary Beth York. She shows this technique with her three easy step eyeshadow kit. Here in Mary Beth's eyeshadow palette, you see she has her eye drawn out here. Eyeshadows one go all over the lid, the two go in the crease, and the three go on the lining. The Romans also endured the cosmetics. They used lead-based formulas to whiten their skin, and coal was used to line the eye. At one point, Roman women weren't even considered beautiful unless wearing cosmetics, which in turn caused for the prices to rise. As we see here, the two Roman ladies would both be considered beautiful back then due to their both wearing cosmetics. You can see they both have fairly pale skin. Outside of Egypt, cosmetics were used in much lighter forms throughout Greece and Rome, but wasn't nearly as popular. When Christianity rose, many of the women had used jewelry and cosmetics to celebrate religion. Even the Old Testament, dated sometime around 840 B.C., states that two kings had painted their eyelids described in a Wikipedia website I gathered from online. <laughs> when the Roman Empire began to fall and began to enter the Dark Ages with illness, poverty, and harsh living conditions, the importance that once surrounded cosmetics dissipated, and cosmetics almost ceased to exist completely. Finally, with English Queen Elizabeth I in 1558 through 1603 set up fashion trend and caught the attention of many royalty as well as aristocrats across England and France. Her use of cosmetics to make her face appear whiter and giving bright color to her lips showed a short spark in cosmetics. Though following Queen Elizabeth in the late 17th century to mid 18th century, cosmetics didn't seem to change and had little effect, if any at all. Though by the 19th century, cosmetics became ideal, especially by the price. People found a place to sell and market cosmetics. Soon, women of all ages were seen with cosmetic products, especially in the film industry. After World War II, more new trends of fashion and cosmetics began to swarm across the entire globe. Following the word beauty throughout the centuries, as well as different uses of cosmetics, has shown how cosmetics has traveled through generations and generations to be where it is today. With a wide array of cosmetics that inhibits one's sensitivity, creativity, and allows to alter or show one's expression, and help to express one's individual personality. The history of cosmetics has developed again and again through the vast circle of humans' right to retain to their own eternal beauty. From a winged eyeliner that protects Egyptians' eye from the sun, to being considered by the can be considered beautiful by the Romans, or to an inspiring career today, such as celebrity makeup artist Mary Beth York. 
The word cosmetics has been around since 4000 BC and has created a vast industry of perfumes, essential oils, makeup, hair dyes, and lotions. And is still used throughout the world as we see it today. Thank you all for listening to my speech on the history of cosmetics.